You're probably wondering why there's a black Lamborghini pulling up to a U-Haul trailer and some squinty-eyed dumbass walking around trying to figure out how to get it on there. Well, I'm that squinty-eyed dumbass and that black Lamborghini is the car that I've been looking for for the past year that I just managed to pick up from a buyer in South Florida. It was super hot this day. I'd been in South Florida for three days after figuring it would only take one to actually get the car. Um, but it took a while for the wire transfers to post and just a ton of other like random little issues to get this thing done. So this particular car is a 2005 Lamborghini Gallardo six speed. Pretty rare uh, as they only made about I don't know, 96 manuals that year. They tend to run about one in 100 in terms of the manufacturing of the manual cars to the e-gear cars. I'd been digging around. It actually took me about two months to land the deal with this particular seller. And after rounds and rounds of negotiations, um, I used some of my shrewd negotiation skills, as Ed Bolian would say, and um, managed to get the seller to agree to my price. Um, of course, the car wasn't quite in the condition as described, which is no shock when you're buying a black car out of South Florida. So it needed a good bit of work. And after you know thinking through all the wonderful things that would happen, you know, and all the fun you could have, and like driving it back to Atlanta from South Florida, I decided it would probably be better to transfer the car home. After hearing all of the horrible exotic transfer, you know, exotic transport car stories from, you know, both Ed and others, I figured the heck with it. I would just get a really fancy U-Haul trailer and load the car up and tow it home myself. Um, you know, while there's obviously tons of uh, weird things about putting a Lamborghini on a U-Haul trailer, um, believe it or not, they fit pretty well. I'd actually seen a couple of videos and some pictures of guys um, that had them loaded on them before, taking them to like track days. And so I knew I could get it on there. It was definitely going to take some modifications to make sure we didn't scrub or, you know, scratch anything or hang the car up on, uh, on the ramps. But overall, it, it went on pretty well. We actually managed in this video to find a, a hill where you can see the parking lot attendant right there walking down. Pretty rare in South Florida, but uh, we're able to find a small enough hill where the car could basically um, roll up on there without having to, like, block it up using wood. Um, you will see here in the next few minutes, I've got to make quite a good bit of modifications to um, some, of the, some of the boards I brought down to get the car loaded up and get it strapped down. But all in all, pretty uneventful trip home. And, uh, and the car, of course, has gone through multiple transformations since. But it took me a long time. I've, I've never really bought or owned a, I would call, exotic car. Uh, the most expensive vehicle to date that I had ever owned was the truck actually pulling this trailer, uh, which I paid $21,000 for. So... You know, big step for me in terms of buying my first exotic. I knew it needed a good bit of work after doing the PPI and uh, really just figured this would be a good candidate and it'd be a fun car. I had no desire to own a, an automatic car. It definitely needed to be a manual uh, gated um, Gallardo. And after kind of kicking around a bunch of different options, the ZR1s and Viper SRTs and you know, Ferrari 430s or 360s, I really landed on kind of kept, kept coming back around to the fact that the Gallardo is really more, you know, of an Audi underneath, and so I can get a lot of the components, um, you know, from Audi dealerships or even from just auto parts stores. It was just less daunting in terms of uh, my ability to fix it, and um, quite frankly, like just overall, the look and feel of the car has always just been super appealing to me. So, you know, versus all the other vehicles I could have bought, certainly not the fastest. Um, you know, in some respects, not even the most uh, most sort of luxurious in terms of Italian sports cars, but. The one I ended up landing on, and I, I'm very happy that I did, I've, I've had the car now for about six months and um, done a lot to it. You'll see some subsequent videos on all the work we've done, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a fantastic vehicle. So, you know, this is uh, the first step to us kind of getting it home, and uh, I figured I would uh, kind of do a little quick shot of what it takes to get a Lamborghini Gallardo loaded up onto a very, very snazzy U-Haul trailer, and uh, you can see it involves things like sawzalls and pieces of wood. Uh, and all sorts of creativity. So uh, feel free to comment uh, below or chime in with questions. Happy to help uh, or give you some idea on what we did here and uh, 
follow along to the adventure. It's going to be a fun one. The car has already gone uh, through some pretty big transformations, and there's more to come. So really excited about having kind of my first exotic, and hope to have you guys along the adventure with me. following along or along rather at home it's hot it's still in South Florida day three it's supposed to be one day uh, car has been procured and loaded onto this highly exotic other way u-haul uh, trailer if you guys haven't heard of u-haul they're uh, known very highly and thought very highly of in the exotic car transport world um, so we had no doubts of getting this car on this trailer you can see we had to use our custom uh, pressure treated two by sixes along with a one by eight piece of white pine here to get it up and uh, it worked well. So it's just real hot, real sweaty. But uh, she's strapped down, about to make the trip home. Let's see if uh, you guys have a good view. This thing. Well, so heading back to Atlanta. This thing is pretty nasty. It's uh, lived most of its life outside, so covered in dirt. And the underside of it is equally as dusty. So first thing, wash. After getting the car loaded up in what seemed to be the hottest day possible, it was time to say goodbye to the strange peacocks of South Florida and hit the road for home. Move, peacock, get out the way. As always, we enjoyed our time in South Florida, managed to grab a couple of really solid meals and some drinks, got in a little bit of time on the beach between the wire transfer nonsense, even got to see a little bit of the nightlife on South Beach, but it was time to get home. Fortunately, the ride home was really uneventful, which is a lot better than I can say about the next few weeks. And while I hate to leave you hanging, I promise it'll be good.